Hey everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Arctic Freezer 7X. It's basically the successor to the basically the 7 Pro. So we're going to see actually how good it is at cooling and basically how much performance you get out of something like this for just £16.99. Yeah, 17 quid you're getting yourself an aftermarket cooler which looks pretty decent in all honesty. Uh, and we're going to see how much better than it is compared to stock and one or two other coolers out on the market. Okay, let's start off by having a quick look at the box. So as you can see, it's their traditional blue box where you can see the picture on there of the actual product, which is nice and clear. It's got their logo on. It's got a six year limited warranty. So that's one hell of a good warranty on there. Uh, you've got a QR code so you can download manuals. Uh, it tells you it's the Freezer 7X and it's a compact multi-compatible CPO cooler. Uh, on the next side it tells you all the different information in different languages. On the back it shows you about the pressure optimised fan. You've got direct touch heat pipes there. So there's basically it looks like four, well it's actually, yeah it's four heat pipes unless they're actually joining up by the looks of the picture. Um, it's compatible with AMD and Intel sockets and it's got a fluid dynamic bearing. And it's saying basically it should be quite a bit cooler than, for example, the Freezer 12 and the AMD Wraith Spire. On the next side, it gives you information about how it's broken down, so in all the different parts. So you can see the fan itself, the heatsink, the screws, and the bracket there. And it gives you all the dimensions as well on there, so you can see exactly how uh, big it is, what it fits on. And Okay, so this is what we've got in the box. First of all, we've got obviously this thing, piece of paper what basically says thank you for using Arctic and it tells you how to contact support and blah blah blah, uh, which is there. You've also got a QR code as well that will allow you to uh, download the manual or view the manual via your smart device. Uh, Arctic are carbon neutral company, so that means they try and use the less or the least amount of obviously paper and so forth, so downloading the manual is a thing for them. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And then otherwise all you've got is the cooler, uh, the mounting bracket, as well as the four pins is the best way of putting it. This is extremely easy to fit to any motherboard. You don't have to take the motherboard out of the case or anything like that. You don't have to access the back of the motherboard. It all attaches basically to the top of the uh, uh, motherboard like you would on a stock cooler. So this is obviously the bracket or retention ring or whatever you want to call it for Intel. Uh, and these are the pins. So what you do is basically put that uh, basically over the CPU socket and you push these bits through and then that allows the retention socket to actually, or the retention ring, um, to actually clamp down onto the motherboard so it won't move. And then what you do is get your cooler, take the bit of plastic off the bottom, it's pre-applied with paste, you get these hooks here inwards so sort of like that and then it goes over the top um, well that way around it goes over the top and clamps onto these bits here and then it's in place it's as simple as that and if you're wanting to attach it to an AMD cooler basically similar thing again you've usually got these retention um, little grips uh, where your normal cooler will be and you basically just clip that those over that and it's in place it's it's pretty simple and then you've got screws there to screw it in and tighten it in to make sure it doesn't pop off or anything like that let's have a quicker clo closer look at the cooler itself first thing you notice you've got your fan uh, it is pressure optimized it's five blades it's arctic's own fan but it's specially designed one for specifically this fan, and it's all moulded around. So if you wanted to change the fan for whatever reason, let's just say you wanted to put RGB fan in its place, tough luck, it ain't going to happen. Um, this is designed specifically to fit this, so there's no way of taking that off and use it elsewhere, and vice versa. Um, so it has got plastic mould, what covers roughly half of it. 
Um, so as you can see it goes to around about there. The back you can just see the fins itself, uh, which are nice and dense. You can just about see the fan uh, through the fins. It's got their logo on the top, there's no RGB or anything along that lines on there. Um, so, depending on if you see that as an advantage or disadvantage, that's obviously up to you. But again, this is a £17 cooler. Uh, and it should, in theory, give us a hell of a lot better performance than your stock coolers. Along with the increase in performance, obviously it's supposed to be uh, quieter as well. So obviously we'll see if that's going to be the case. You can see the heat pipes there. Uh, hard to tell if the heat pipes, you can see where I've smudged the paste a little bit. You can, the heat pipes go into the block. I'm guessing that's two heat pipes that will go all the way around, uh, rather than two heat pipes, um, sorry, rather than four heat pipes. So I'm just going to rub that away just to see if that copper goes all the way across. It does. So it is actually two heat pipes, uh, which basically uh, makes sort of a U shape and then comes out at the top just in there. Uh, it is a four pin power cable, um, so it just plugs straight into your motherboard header, obviously where your CPU fan goes, uh, and it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, the paste on there is their MX paste, which is uh, their popular one, which uh, sells a hell of a lot. I think it's called MX2 off the top of my head, um, so it's actually very, very good uh, paste, so you don't need to go out and buy any special paste or anything like that for better performance, because their paste is generally... Uh, very good uh, and obviously we've been pre-applied you don't have to guess how much you need to put on to your CPU if it's your first time so it gives you a rough idea so otherwise I'm very happy with this cooler can't see any problems with it from looks um, the only thing is is obviously as I said no RGB can't change the fan um, but then again it's got a six year warranty on there so if you do have an issue with the fan then hopefully they'll be able to sort you out under the warranty Okay, so let's actually fit this cooler. So, basics is, you get your motherboard, make sure your CPU is nice and clean, and obviously installed if you haven't already. You get your cooler, make sure the clips are inwards. So that means, you can probably see just about there, that sort of L shape is sort of inwards on both sides. So when you put it over these two little clip holes here we'll put one over and then the other one over as well which can be a little bit fiddly getting it in place but once you get your screwdriver you just tighten up that screw and that allows it to grip into place. I usually like to do it a little bit on one side and then a little bit on the other side to even the pressure before tighten it all the way. And it's as simple as that. And that is pretty much the whole of the fitting is just basically screwing it in on there. And as I said, if you're using the uh, Intel uh, motherboard, you just basically have to plug this bit into the holes over the CPU mount and then put these little pegs through which hold it in place and then again screw this onto the little clips what are left on that o-ring mount there we go that's nice and tight now and the only thing left to do is get the actual four pin the cable's not the longest in all honesty, which can be an advantage and a disadvantage, so it doesn't make it look too messy. But if you've got an odd place, which you shouldn't have for your CPU header, then it can make it a bit difficult to put in. But that's it, that's in, and it's in sturdy. And as you can see, I can pick up this whole state from using the cooler because it is in nice and sturdy. And as you can see, the cooler is now fitted. The memory is already in and was before, I didn't have to remove it. It's set so it doesn't touch the memory, which is really good for unless for whatever reason your memory is really wide, it could cause an issue. But I can't say I've seen anything that wide, which should. But who knows uh, what's on the market. So, 
we'll turn it on and basically you should just power on and away you go and it's as simple as that so as you can see no RGB lights on the actual fan itself but obviously that white makes it gives it that nice clean effect and obviously if you have got color uh, lights in your case they will make the fan obviously light up a certain way uh, because they reflect off of the white okay our test setup comprises of an Intel i7 9700KF processor a Gigabyte Aorus Z390 Elite motherboard. We're also running 16 gig of memory, a Seagate Fire CUDA 520 SSD, as well as a few other bits and bobs, which is pretty generic. Um, but the basics is all tests are run in 15 degrees Celsius rooms. All the tests are run for 30 minutes each. The temperature is the average temperature at those tests so for example if one core was 70 another core was 60 the average would be 65 but again it's the average temperature over 30 minutes and the average temperature of all cores combined all the voltages are fixed for the testing so there's no fluctuation and we make sure that the CPU obviously when it is under load is under 100% load and all cores are being stressed. Uh, we don't test the fans on automatic mode because that sort of defeats the object because if you've got a bad cooler it will basically run the fans faster to get roughly the same temperature so we run the tests at 50% and on 100% of their speed on all tests the test machine is running the same version of Windows with Windows updates disabled so there's no differences for any reason with any updates causing problems in the background or differences for whatever reason that goes for the same for the drivers and all background programs are also disabled so that we can basically test it under a controlled environment as much as possible. In this first test you can see we are testing the idle temperature uh, at 50% fan speed and as you can see the arctic freezer comes in at 22.8 degrees compared to 26.3 on the Intel stock cooler so straight away the arctic freezer is a lot cooler at obviously idle temperatures and idle basically means that nothing is running and the machine is just sitting there idle for 30 minutes and all that's on is basically the screen uh, next we do a 100% CPU load so we basically make the processor work as hard as it possibly can with the fan again running at 50% speed and as you can see here the Arctic Freed is basically getting 56 degrees compared to the Intel stock cooler running at just over 93 degrees Celsius so that is a lot cooler and again this is at 50% fan speed so normally the Intel CPU cooler will be revving up at 100% speed to keep itself cool the Arctic doesn't need to again we did an idle temperature test with the fan running at 100% speed and again you can see here the Arctic freezer is running very cool at 19 degrees and the Intel stock cooler is not actually that much difference to when uh, it was at 50% fan speed uh, and it's running at 26 degrees and again it is a lot cooler the Arctic freezer 7x on the next test we're going to run the CPU again at full load so that means it's going to work 100% and the fan speed is at 100% as well and the Arctic Freezer well look at it it is running as low as 48 degrees in comparison to 81 degrees on the Intel stock cooler that's to be honest with you a pretty impressive score it's not far off half the temperature of the Intel stock cooler this is really impressive considering it is a 17 pound cooler which you're not going to really get much better for that sort of price in this test we basically overclock the processor to 5 gigahertz which is pretty fast speed uh, fast which requires us putting the voltage up to 1.35 volts which increases the temperature basically again it's cpu's full load and the fan speed is at 100 percent the arctic freezer 7x performed at 56.1 degrees that's pretty impressive considering the intel stock cooler unfortunately just came up with blue screens or froze and would not finish the testing in this final test we have a look what the decibel level is the room decibel level is 44.7 decibels and the arctic freezer at 50 percent fan speed is only just audible above that even at 100 percent it only goes up to 52.6 decibels 
in comparison, the Intel fan is practically the same volume or decibel level as the freezer is when it's running at 100%. And obviously when you stick that uh, Intel cooler on at 100%, it makes one hell of a racket. Overall, I'm very happy with this cooler and actually quite surprised it was able to cool stuff down as much as it actually did, considering it's only a 17 quid cooler. That's pretty cheap. Um, in comparison to some of the coolers out there, I've seen coolers which run a lot hotter, which cost a lot more than that. So in conclusion, there's not much I can really say. Just think about it. This performance for the price and being very quiet, there's only one award I can give this, and this is our Hell Yeah Award!